ladies and gentlemen. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Millions of people. Some of them don't know who they are. Some don't care. Some of them won't tell you. Some of them can't tell you. I keep track of them all. I'm a cop. It was Monday, December 14th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Bernard. My name's Friday. In the past two months, a thief had broken into 18 markets. We had no lead to his identity. We had to try and stop him. Did you give it to him? Uh-huh. Now, what'd he say? When did he come back? Did he have it for you? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that'll teach you not to go that route again. <laughs> All right, Patrick. Have the sergeant call me when he comes in. All right. I'm just talking to Gene Patrick over at Highland Park. You know him? Yeah, we met him a couple of times. Picked up a youngster a couple of days ago on suspicion of burglary. Brought him into the office, Patrick talked to him. Yeah. I finally bought it, the kid didn't have anything to do with the thefts. Told him to go home. Uh-huh. Kid told Gene he didn't have money to get home. Patrick loaned him 20 cents. Kid swore he'd come in and pay him back. Did he? Yeah. Came in this morning, gave Patrick two dimes, told him thanks for believing his story. Uh-huh. Well, Patrick got the kicker. The kid really did break into a house last night to get the money. What's Patrick got to say about it? Well, he says that the kid's honest in a sort of a way. He did pay him back. Where's the youngster now? Got him over at Highland Park, juvenile. I better call Gene. Maybe I can give him a hand. I got a couple of streetcar tokens I won't be using. He might like to have them. If I was you, I don't think I'd bring it up to him for a couple of days. What can I do for you two? Well, we've been working on a string of burglaries. Maybe you got the word on them. I don't think so. What's the story? Bunch of store burglaries. Papers that tagged them to milk bottle jobs. Oh, yeah. It seems hard girl was saying something about it the other day. Where do we come in? The way the jobs look, we've been thinking maybe it belongs in your division instead of ours. How do you figure that? First off, the milk thing. What do you mean? Well, every job he's pulled, we found an empty milk bottle on the counter. Yeah. What does that prove? Well, milk and kids go together. So do milk and ulcers. Well, there's another thing. The way he prowls the places, all he takes is petty cash. A couple of bucks at the outside. Candy, cigarettes, nothing big. Some of the places he's gone into, you could open the safe with a pocket knife and he hasn't made a move toward him. Well, maybe he's a kleptomaniac. Got a lot of them on the books. Maybe that's the way he gets his kicks. Well, that's a real nice try, Dick. If you know anybody that can climb through a 14 by 10 inch hole, you trot him up and we'll talk to him. Well, you guys know we'll go along with you on this thing. Anything we can do to help, we're willing to do it, but still your investigation. Well, we're not trying to palm this off on you, Dick. We've had the stats office make so many runs on small adults that the cards are wearing out. It just seems that none of the leads we've been chasing come out anywhere. We figured that maybe you could come up with some answers for us. No, it's a new one on me, Joe, this milk bit. I've heard of a couple of thieves that went in for it, but can't give you the name of a juvenile offhand. Pass the word around to day watch, see what they can come up with. Leave a note for Hartgrove, he can pass it on to the night watch. We'll appreciate anything you can do. No trouble. Been running your ragged on this, huh? Pretty rough, yeah. It's just that we never seem to be able to come up with anything that adds. Excuse me. Juvenile Division, Whitley. Yeah. Yeah, they're here. Which one? Okay, hang on. For you, Joe. Your office. Thank you. Friday talking. Yeah, Lieutenant. When? Yeah, I got it. We'll get right over there. Right. Bye. The milk bottle burger. He just hit again. Frank and I left juvenile division and drove over to the address Ginder had given us. The call had come from Lieutenant Ginder in burglary. He told us that he just got a call from a storekeeper named Monty Bordoni. The man had called to report a burglary at his store at the corner of Jackson and Broadway Streets. Lieutenant Ginder told us that the crime lab had been notified and had dispatched a crew to investigate the premises for physical evidence. The store that had been broken into was a small Italian delicatessen on the southeast corner. 
Ray Pinker and the crime lab crew had already arrived and were winding up their investigation. How's it going, Ray? Hi, Joe. Frank. Hi. Usual thing. Bottle of milk on the counter. Yep. Yeah. You want to check it over? Yeah. Come on back here. He's made his entrance back here in the rear of the store. There it is. He broke out the window pane. Not very big. Measures nine and a half by twelve and three quarters. Well, how come the burglar alarm didn't go off, Ray? I talked to the owner about that. He says he's had trouble with the alarm system the last couple of weeks. Called the company and asked him to fix it. Yeah. He thought it was okay. Guess something went wrong somewhere. It didn't work last night. What kind of alarm is it, Ray? Bell alarm outside on the building. You know the kind. Yeah. What'd he take this time, Ray? Usual run of stuff. According to the owner, about four cartons of cigarettes missing. Several boxes of candy. Can't be absolutely sure. Says he's got a checky stock. Be better if you talk to him on that. Yeah, we'll catch him a little later. You want to wait a minute? I'll check and see how the boys are doing on the prints. I had him check the counter in the milk bottle. Okay, Ray. I'll be right back. Right. Well, I wonder when you're going to blow the whistle on this guy. I don't know. Can't do it fast enough for me. I'll put him with you. Hey, Joe. Look at that. What? Salami. Man, I'd sure like to buy a couple of those before we leave. Why? Matzahs and eggs, Joe. Joe, haven't you ever had matzahs and eggs? Well, what's the salami got to do with it? Just a little idea of mine? Yeah. You always like my omelets, Joe. Special for you, just the way you like them. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure, but I still think I got heartburn from that last one you made for me. I wish you wouldn't kid me, Joe. You're crazy about them. I know you are. Yeah, sure. Joe, I've been working on this one for weeks. Working on what? It's brand new. I'm going to introduce it in this country. I saw it in one of those Italian movies. Looked great. Yeah, did they tell you how to make it in the English subtitles? No. Oh. They only tell the story there. I could see what they put in it. All right, what's in it? Salami, eggs, garlic, wine, some stuff in a little round bottle. What's the stuff in a little round bottle? I got three more days. What do you mean? I got plenty of time to see that movie again before they change the bill. I'll find out what it was. Just finished with the powder, Joe. Yeah. Nothing. Whoever it was drank the milk, it took the bottle out of the refrigeration compartment. Bottle sweated and there isn't a print on it we can lift. None of them any place else, huh? No, we've gone over the store from top to bottom. So there, we can't find them. That's well, not much help then, huh? Came up with one thing. Maybe you can make something out of it. What's that? Outside the window in the back parking lot. Came up with an open pack of cigarettes. Don't know if it belonged to Thief. Anything on it? No, a fog last night ruined any prints it might have carried. Boys have it, though, if you want it. Yeah, well, we'll take a look at it, Ray. Looks like another blank, doesn't it? I don't envy you guys trying to break this one. Most of the time, there's a leak someplace. Somewhere along the line, the guy's gonna... Thanks, John. The guy's gonna make a mistake and not cover something. All right. Yeah. This is either the smartest thief I've ever seen or the luckiest. What's this make for him? This is number 19. Hmm. Taking a lot of chances for nothing. He's not getting anything out of these jobs. Maybe he isn't, but we are. What? A lot of headaches. <laughs> a.m. We talked to the victim. He told us that as near as he could figure, there was approximately $4 stolen from the store. He went on to say that he'd ascertained that five cartons of cigarettes and several boxes of candy bars were taken. He was unable to tell us if any other merchandise had been stolen until he'd made a complete inventory. He went on to tell us that there was over $600 in the safe, but as far as we could tell, there'd been no attempts made to break into it. We made a canvas of the neighborhood and talked with the neighbors. None of them recalled having seen any suspicious people in the area the night before. None of them had seen a suspicious automobile in the vicinity. The one thing that was apparent was that the thief was working in a definite pattern. He worked only on Friday or Saturday night, always between 8 p.m. and 12 midnight. Frank and I met with Captain Bernard, and it was decided that we could maintain a rolling stakeout in the area in which the suspect operated. Four other cars from Metro Reserves were assigned to work with us. The next five nights we worked without results. It was slow and tedious work, but considering the lack of information we had on the thief, it was the only thing to be done. We had to be on or near the scene when the thief struck again. Saturday night, December 19th, Frank and I met and drove out to the area. The streets were crowded with early Christmas shoppers. Well, we can start up this way tonight. Hey, wait a minute. You know, Joe, I think I'll take a nice pie home to Faye tonight. What's the matter? I have to. What's the matter? How many rooms in your apartment, Joe? Well, three. You know that. Won't be enough. What are you talking about, Frank? If 
Clay. What she got to do with my apartment? Hacked, Joe. Real hacked. Well, what's the matter? I got up this morning. Felt great. He's got breakfast on the table, all nice. A couple of eggs, little pig sausages. Nice, you know. Yeah. I come down the table, she's got the food already. And I hit her with it. The food? No, Joe. I tell her I'm going to have to work tonight. Well, you work every night this week. What's wrong with that? That's the way I figure it. But I got a way out. You have, huh? Sure, Joe. Today's Faye's birthday. You didn't tell me. Well, it's not a good idea to tell people, Joe. Well, since when? Well, you see, Faye's over 30. Yeah, I kind of figured that. Don't you get it? I'm sorry, pal. You left me a couple of blocks back. Faye's over 30. She's getting to the point where she's taking the years off. How can you give a person a last birthday present? Yeah. I tell you about it, you're going to want to give her a present. Only now, instead of being 30, she's 29. You get it? Frankly, no, I don't. But as long as you do, I guess it's all right. Yeah. Well, what about this morning? Well, I told her I was going to have to work. And I got this present for her. Brand new deep fat fryer. Real good. All wrapped up with ribbon. Beautiful. So you gave it to her. Did it do any good? Not a pound. She's so hacked at me, you know what she does with it? At this point, I wouldn't even venture a guess. I'm serious, Joe. This may mean the end of my happy home. All right, go ahead. Well, she doesn't even open it. Just puts it in the closet on the back porch. Doesn't even pull the paper apart to peek at what's in it. Real mad, Joe. She may not let me in the house tonight. Well, you can apologize when you get home, can't you? I don't know, Joe. Face pretty sore. Doesn't even open the present. Not even a peek. Hold it. Hmm? Hear that burglar alarm? Yeah. Sounds like it's coming from up here on 7th Street, doesn't it? Right. Come on. What are you doing in the store, son? What do you think I'm doing? He asked you a question, boy. Pretty stupid. What do you think I was doing? How many stores have you broken into, son? Figure it out for yourself. What do you got a chip on your shoulder for? You're big guys. Don't give me a lot of conversation. Do what you want to do. What's your name, son? What difference does it make? Acting like that isn't going to help you. Now take it easy. You guys picked me up, remember? You worry about it. I got nothing to be afraid of. Yes, you have, son. You could have been shot back there. Maybe you should have pulled the trigger. Now, look, what's wrong with you? Why are you acting like this? You just got real lucky. That's the only reason you're alive now. It was dark back there. You didn't stop when I told you to. You could have been shot. You know that, don't you? Killing a kid. Does that make you a big man? No, I'm just bringing it up to prove a point. Save it. Now, you listen to me, son. I'm going to tell you something. When you break into a place at night, you're not a kid anymore. You're asking for trouble. You had both your arms full of it. The way you worked it tonight makes us think that you're mixed up in a lot more thefts than just tonight. That right? How many times have you been arrested? I haven't. Never been in trouble with the law? Sure. I'm a real criminal. I got a ticket once for riding my bike through a boulevard stop. Radio car stopped me and tagged me. Big deal. Thought they were going to send me to San Quentin. Maybe you can give me the gas chamber. How old are you? What difference does that make? How old? You'll figure it. You look like you're about nine or ten to me. That's what everybody thinks. I'll be 15 my next birthday. Don't kid us, son. It's the truth. 15. That's what I'll be, 15. You're small for your age, aren't you? Why do you say that? Aren't you? It's got nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. I can do anything any other kid can do. Anything. Don't you forget it. What's the matter? Is that a sore point with you? Hmm? Your size, is that a sore point? Nothing wrong with my size. Doctor says I'm all right. Just that some people aren't meant to be as big as others, that's all. There's nothing wrong with me. Come on, son, what's your name? You know we're going to find out. How are you going to find out? We will. Now, why don't you save us both a lot of time and trouble and tell us the truth? You better if you did. If I tell you, you going to put it in the papers? What's that? If, if I tell you, there are going to be a lot of reporters around. My name going to get in the papers? Not from us. Can't tell you then. You mean if there's no reporters around, you aren't going to tell us your name, huh? That's the way it's going to be. That's kind of funny, isn't it? Maybe that's the way it looks to you. Where do you live? Can't tell you that either. Well, look, you got things all wrong, son. It isn't what you want to tell us. That's got nothing to do with it. You're going to tell us what we want to know. Where are you going to take me? Georgia Street. Is that where the jail is? Why do you ask that? Because I want to know. There's a jail there, yeah. Reporters? What? There are going to be reporters there. What is this thing with reporters and you? What's it all about? Reporters put your name in the papers, don't they? Sometimes. Well, you get the reporters all lined up. You get them from all the papers. You add them there and I'll tell you all about it, the whole story. You just get the reporters and the photographers. 
Be sure about them, because I want some pictures, too. Now, you let me get this straight, will you? What? You say you aren't going to give us any information without the press being there, is that it? That's the way it's going to be. You got it wrong, boy. What? Doesn't make any difference who's there. You're going to come around. Yeah? We'll find out. p.m. we took the youngster and started back to juvenile division. The officers notified the store owner to stand by until they got there. They made out a 459 report. 10.30 p.m. we got to Georgia Street Juvenile Division. This sure is a seedy looking place, isn't it? It's been here a long time. You want to wait just a minute? I'll check in, sir. Yeah. Hi, partner. Where's? Working kind of late tonight, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. I got the note from Whitley on the milk burglaries. Checked around the night watch, nothing on it, so I didn't call you. I don't think you need to worry about it. I think we got the answer. Yeah? We got a kid, got him cold in the market. Where is he now? Frank's got him out in the hall. You think he's your boy? Well, it looks like it, Verge. We caught him coming out of the market. Small entrance all along the line, it fits. You got that kind of a case, what are you worrying about? Two things. Yeah. Who he is and why he did it. Won't tell you, huh? No. He's got some big thing working about the press. Says he won't give us anything without reporters being there. Makes it rough, Joe. You know the policy. Yeah, but he won't let us help him. If he wants publicity, introduce me as a reporter. Might do it. Won't do any harm to try. Let's go. Okay, I'll bring him in. Just a minute. Yeah. Who shall I be? Mm. Tell him you're Sid Hughes from the mayor. Okay. All right, son, you want to come in? Sit down. You told us that you wanted to talk to somebody from one of the newspapers. It's against department policy, but we swung him. This is a reporter. What are you doing in here? This isn't a press room. Lieutenant lets us wait in here. Anything wrong? No, I just wondered. What's your name? Sid Hughes in the mirror. Are you the fellow held that guy on the phone in Baltimore? Yeah. Great. I read all about it. You gonna light me up like that? I hope not, son. There were two men killed in that operation. I read all the stories. Everybody did. That's how I mean for you to write me up with a picture. What makes you think you got it coming? You break into one store and try to steal a couple of cartons of cigarettes, that doesn't make the first page. One store? I got into 19 of them. 19 before they caught me. That's important, isn't it? That's a story. I don't know. Might be. A couple of things we better get straightened out, son. First off, what's your name? You better get your notebook out. Be able to take all this down. Don't worry about it, son. You just answer the questions. I'll get it. Yeah. Oh, okay, my, my name's Elroy Graham. That's E-L-R-O-Y-G-R-A-H-A-M. Yeah. How old are you? I told you once, I was 15. Now, you said you'd broken into 19 stores, is that right? Yeah, 19. Might have made them more, but something went wrong tonight. I trouble with the burglar alarm. Thought I'd turned it off. Bad mistake. Be still working if it wasn't for that. Guess it only takes one, though, huh, Mr. Hughes? Yeah, guess so. You want to tell us why you did it? What? You had to have a reason for committing these burglaries. Want to tell us what it was? Sure. Good reason. Real good. All right, go ahead. Well, you see, I always had trouble at school. Never seemed to quite make it. All the guys like me, they all did. All the girls do, too. Got girls call me most every night, ask me to take them to dances, stuff like that. But I don't go much for that kind of stuff. You can understand it, can't you, Mr. Hughes? Go ahead, all right. Well, they wanted me for all the teams, football, basketball, all the time asking me to play. But I figure if you're going to get ahead in the world, you got to have a name. Some place where you want to get. Figure out that, work for it, and you're going to get there. Don't you find that true, Mr. Hughes? Go ahead. That's the way it was with me. All the time turned down offers to be on some team, telling some girl I couldn't take her to a dance. Just didn't have the time. Somehow I just couldn't make it. You can understand it. You've been around. You know all the successful kind of people. You write something and a lot of people read it. You know what I mean. Don't you? W what's the matter? Something wrong? I I'm trying to tell you what happened. I'm giving it to you straight. What's the matter? Now, do you want to tell us the truth, Elroy? What? I don't know why you're trying to sell us this line, boy. It isn't necessary. I don't know why you did what you did, but I do know you had a reason for it. But that's what I want to know, that reason. You don't believe me? Afraid not. How about you? No, son. Mr. Hughes? Nope. <laughs> Can't even lie right. <laughs> Can't even tell a lie good. <laughs> All my life I've been trying to be like other kids. All the time getting beat up, getting left out of things. You know why? Do you know? Go ahead. Big reason. 
biggest reason in the world. Because I'm almost 15 years old and I'm 4 feet 7 inches tall. 4 foot 7, weighed 85 pounds. That ain't very big, not big enough. All the time the other kid's shoving you around. All the time you're the joke. It gets to the time when you figure it's easier to laugh too. Because you don't, some kid's going to beat you up. It gets to the point where you just don't care anymore. I used to clip out those coupons and send them in. Get those books back on how to build myself up. Worked at it. All the time didn't do nothing for me. I was still four feet seven, weighed 85 pounds. All the stuff I took didn't do no good. Still came out four feet seven, 85 pounds. You want to tell us about the burglaries? I did it to be big, that's why. Wanted to be important in front of the other kids at school. Important to them. Don't you see that? You gotta understand it, Mr. Hughes. That's why I wanted my picture in the paper. That's why I wanted the story. So the kids would know I'd done something big. So they'd know. All right, son, it's gonna be all right. No, it isn't. Like everything else I tried to do, I lost it up. I didn't mean to steal, but it was the only way. The only way I had. Wasn't there some other way? No. No, there wasn't. All the time, the other kids laughing. All the time, talking. I just couldn't stand anymore. I just couldn't. Here, son. Thanks. <laughs> you can understand it, can't you? It makes sense. What's that? I didn't mind the kids saying I was little. Yeah. But I didn't want them to think I was small. Eleven fifteen p.m. We contacted the parents of the Graham boy and asked them to come down to the station. We talked to them for an hour and tried to fill them in. In view of the numerous burglaries, the boy was booked on suspicion of 459 P.C. delinquent. But because his parents were responsible persons and very cooperative, he was released to them pending his hearing in juvenile court. Mr. and Ms. Graham promised to assist us in the recovery of the stolen property and to make restitution where recovery was not possible. Five days passed and we heard nothing from the Graham boy. On December 24th, Frank and I checked into the office. Hi, Mr. Friday. Hi, Elroy. Right. How are you? What can we do for you? Um, you guys must think it's pretty funny. What's that, son? Well, I, I want to tell you, I sure think it's good what you did for me. Helped me out after that burglary thing the other night. Well, it isn't over yet, son. The court still has to make a decision. Yeah, but the way you talked to my folks, well, what you said made me feel better. As far as I'm concerned, whatever the judge decides, I'll go along with it. I had a long talk with my folks. We got it all talked out. All the way talked out. That's good, son. We're glad to hear it, Elroy. Maybe, maybe you guys won't like it. I mean, me knowing you such a short time and all. But I wanted to bring you these. Merry Christmas. That's nice of you, Elroy, but it isn't necessary. It isn't much. We can't accept gratuity, son. What do you mean? We can't take anything from you. Oh. It's just a couple of candy bars. It's all right, Elroy. You keep them. Okay. Uh, are you sure? I'm sorry, son. I had a special reason I wanted you to have them. Yeah? I didn't steal these. December 21st, a petition was filed in juvenile court on behalf of the subject. On January 26th, the juvenile court hearing was held in Department 96, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that hearing. The subject admitted that the allegations of the petition were true. The petition was sustained, and he was declared to be a ward of the juvenile court.